It's a core faculty. I enjoy it. Keep it up as well. Thank you. Only that, like I told you, <laughs> don't burn too much <laughs> for you not to be consumed by your fire. <laughs> you are keeping the conscience of the country going. You know, ancient Rome had the like of Socrates. And the people used to call him the Godfly. And you know what the Godfly does is that periodically it gives a sting either to the horse or whatever, right. to provide a certain shake. Mm -hmm. This is our society, right. and it will take me and you mm -hmm. to do it. That's why I always watch Johnny's Bite. <laughs> <laughs> the general watches Johnny's Bite. Very, every day. Thank I you very much. And Before. I is devoid of insults, mm -hmm. but straight to the point, mm -hmm. factual, I'm fearless. Hey, Charlie, no be joke. You know, the be pressure joke. people like Johnny can give you. No, no. You know, get gray hair, you go get gray I'm, I'm hair. innocent. And <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That the pressure Johnny and his people, mm -hmm. the pressure they can give you, you know, get gray hair, you go get. So your best bet is not mm -hmm. to have hair. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of that I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Spiders Monday. Monday after a very beautiful weekend somewhere in the Ashanti region. And I should say that the Ashanti region is a very, very beautiful place. One of the things I saw in the Ashanti region, which for me is most uh, important, is the kind of unity and cohesion you had, you know, a social integration there. I had a chance to worship at the Wesley Methodist Cathedral for the very first time. And tell you what. Even though that's an Ashanti area, so you'd have expected to see and hear only Ashanti tree, they were speaking Fanti at some point, and actually some of the Bible readings were in Fanti. So it tells you how closely knit we are as a people, and that those who sometimes make tribal statements and try to, you know, divide us with all their selfish sentiments, of to put a stop to it. I'm talking about the cathedral of the Methodist Church in the heart of the Shanti region. Huh? And in that church, you heard people speak impeccable Fanti. So that's one thing. The second thing I saw, and I think that the, the Ministry of um, Interior, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, good morning to you. Honorable Ambrose Derry, good morning to you. One thing I saw, and, and quite interesting, though, I put a, a, a spin on it, that you get to where the Wesley Methodist Church is, the cathedral, you will see uh, a traditional effigy of a man, bare-chested, cloth wrapped around his waist. He has a gun gun. He's standing atop a lion. That, for me, represents a traditional and cultural, you know, nuance. And then there's the Wesley Cathedral. And then there's also the central prisons. Maybe it's time we relocated the central prisons, I'm thinking, because where it is now, and how people are not supposed to be loitering and getting into close proximity with prisons. I think that it's time that it's relocated. I'm just bouncing this idea off. So I'm saying good morning to you, Honorable Ambrose Derry. You are Interior Minister. This would fall directly within your domain. And maybe the National Security Minister as well, Honorable Kandapa. But that's what I saw in the Ashanti region. I'm bringing you things I saw in the Ashanti region because I think that beyond saying that, for example, the National Cathedral will provide a hub for tourism, I don't think that we have made enough efforts to celebrate our own selves and to also engage in local or domestic tourism. So I took time off beyond the uh, whatever it is and, and decided to get into it. But before I got to the Ashanti region, a matter that we have spoken about over and over and over and over again hit me. Whose idea is it that you construct beautiful roads in the Ashanti region, beautiful roads in the Eastern region, beautiful roads in Accra, beautiful roads in the Volta region, beautiful roads in the Northern region, and not have street lights on them? Whose idea was that? I'm, I'm looking for that person. Is that same person who advised us to construct gutters and not cover them? 
whose idea was it to have beautiful roads and not have street lights on them? Whose, whose idea was that? And he showed them the video. Just be showing them the video, how dark it is and how dangerous it is to drive, especially on the Accra Kumasi Highway. And the, but the, some of the roads are bad. This is the Pokwasi, Hebron, uh, Ayikan, Doblo, uh, stretch of it. So right from Accra, you are hit with it. See, beautiful, be, beautiful road, oh. no street light. No street lights, beautiful road. And you can drive like this for a very, 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 very long time. Beautiful roads. Beautiful roads, no street lights. So I'm, I'm looking for the person who still in the 21st century in Oman, Ghana, awards contracts, negotiates, does everything, supervises it, and doesn't have street lights on them. So everybody's driving with a highlight on, and you can imagine the numbers of people who have died. The statistics are there. Human, human lives have not just become statistics. People are dying left, right, center. And we come and say, oh, this year, a uh, lesser number of people died. As if people are some, uh, what do you call, chewing gum, forgive my French, that are, be, that, that are being sold at Mokola or something like that. So this is my charge to the Minister for Transport and the Minister for Road this morning. How is it that, and this is not just limited to Kumasi, when you're going to Cape Coast, same. When you're going to the Western region, same. When you're going to the Volta region, same. Even close by a brief Eastern region, same. You can find some of the places with street light poles mounted, the bulbs are on, but the street light just doesn't work. So I'm looking for the person whose idea was to have roads constructed, a beautiful road like this. Very, very beautiful road like this. So home in Sawam area, nice road. No street light. And then there's the other painful part where you are driving out of a city to connect to another city. And the road is as slender as a beauty queen. You are driving out of a major city. The city of Accra connecting to the city of the, uh, uh, well, the Eastern region. You are going to the city of the Ashanti region, Kumasi. And the road is so slim and slender. That's it. So you start off, you have two lanes to yourself. Uh, the oncoming vehicles have two lanes to themselves. Then it gets to a point, you have to be competing for that small stretch without street light. You are competing for that small stretch of road without street light. I'm saying people die here. We know it. We know what the statistics are. In 2021 alone, with over 5,000 accident cases in seven months, 2021 alone. 5,000 cases, seven months, 2021 alone. And people are dying on a daily basis. So now, whether you believe in God or not, when you sit in a public transport, they ask you, see, you tell us in your bumpire. Against your will, sometimes you don't want to pray. But they force you because, and you are, you are forced to pray because you don't know what's going to happen. So yes, we are encouraging people to do domestic tourism. But then we should be able to also fix our, our roads. Because if I'm a tourist operator or a tour operator and somebody comes to Accra and I have to take the person to Kumasi or to uh, Cape Coast Castle or I have to take the person to Ho or wherever it is, I have had to contend with a situation like this where the street lights are not functional. In fact, as for this one, there's no street light at all. There are no poles. So I'm looking for the persons who, whose idea it was. To have roads constructed like this and not have street lights. But the third issue about, about this is look at the median. Overgrown rice farms. Danny, this one is night, right, they can't see it. Pull up the videos of the day, the, the ones that are shot in the day. Look at it. Pause, pause, let them see it. Rice farm. Is that what is because we can't care for this? Is that why we are planting stones at the Nkrumah Circle? Because when you get to the Kwame Nkrumah circle, now we don't have lawns, so we, now we are planting stones. So what is, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, parks and gardens and assemblies, what are they doing? And it is a matter that is all over the place. All over. Accra, this, I think this was in Accra. I shot this in Accra. This is Accra from the, that Ablekuma stretch connecting to Pokwasi. Beautiful road. Again, look at the median. And the street lights on most of these roads do not just work. 
So people have become statistics. People are dying. And then there's the unfortunate situation when you, are, you leave the Bonsu area connecting to uh, the Kou area, uh, you would find that a lot of trucks get, get uh, you know, uh, broken down, and then they park right in the middle of the road, and then sometimes they don't even have triangles, and then they go and collect some, uh, what do you call it, branches of trees, and then they come and put it on the road. Such a danger. Such a danger. Who's watching? And I'm saying that there's evidence to show that people have died. Oftentimes when we talk about road accidents, so the driver was tired, the driver has drunk, blah, 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 whatever it is. But people have died because of this. Now, Danny, put a police, uh, a police vehicle photo for me. A police are doing very well. This is a police vehicle I captured. GP4659. GP4659. Look at the tail light of the police vehicle. It, there's, it is non-existent. So can you imagine that I am driving and my tail, light, my tail light is not functioning? Does this police car have the moral right to stop me and say, boss, park, your light is not working? Because he himself, his light is not working. But you see, it is not his job to provide these lights. It is not his job. That job is the job of the state. And sometimes we make them look so bad that you have motorists speaking to them any way and anyhow. I'm saying all of these. These are things I found in the Ashanti Regional. I've not gone anywhere. I found them in the Ashanti Region. GP 4659. Professional police driving bad car. Professional policemen driving bad cars. So on their own, when you see their cars, they are, they, they are nice cars. They are official vehicles. An apology. And then people who perhaps are not contributing anything to the GDP, they have four by fours with air conditioners roaming around town, stopping and parking in front of places, talking to people endlessly. It's this morning I'm saying it because I also had opportunity to have some conversation with some policemen in the Ashanti region. And they tell me, for example, that look, the cameras that have been installed, I think there was this, the project started under Tamils and then got to John Mahama and then President Kufado is continuing it. The, 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 the cameras you find out there, they tell you the cameras are very good, they are very sharp. The only disadvantage is have, they have is that the cameras are not able to function properly at certain places because the places are dark. So you can actually see somebody perpetuating a certain crime, but you cannot identify the individual's face. And sometimes they've had to fall on the patrol teams to quickly act. Why? Meanwhile, we are told that we have excess power. So if you have excess power and you need power, use the power. We have sun shining on our heads, hitting our heads every single day. Sometimes it even affects how some people think. The sun is so hot, it cooks brains. And yet we cannot have solar. These cameras that you see. Very effective. Very, very effective. But how does... And you remember we asked that question here about three years ago. When Vice President Baumia told us that after the, the gruesome murder of um, uh, Chief Inspector Ashilevi, he was Inspector Ashilevi, and then later he was posthumously promoted to the rank of Chief Inspector. Kwabenya, you remember that? We were told that we'll have CCTV cameras in every police station, and we will also have CCTV cameras across the country. Well, we have the CCTV cameras at certain places. But I'm saying that if you, for example, put a CCTV camera on the roads I showed you, then you show them the road. On the road I showed you, you have a CCTV camera there. And people are perpetuating crime. How do you identify the assailants and deal with them? Then you show them the road. Show them the dark road. Don't show, show my face. My face is not the road. Show them the road. If you have a CCTV camera fixed here, boss, you have a CCTV camera fixed here. And then somebody commits a crime. And I'm using, I've had to increase the, uh, the widen the iris of my camera to be able to take these shots. It would have been darker than this. We had to work on it. But then if somebody commits a crime here and now, like this, how do you expect the police to perform magic? Then you turn around the camera and say, the police are not doing anything. They are working. So equip them, help them, support them. Equip them and support them. 
But the ultimate conversation this morning is that we must stop making people statistics. Human beings, even if one person dies because the road is bad, because there are no street lights, because there are no proper road markings, because somebody is driving recklessly, because somebody cannot see, they are both using highlights and they blind each other, we must bow down our heads in shame this morning. And I want to say good morning to our roads minister, Honorable Makwata. Yes, you told us that uh, for those of us who say roads have not been constructed, we are late, we should hurry up. That's fine. I'm saying whose idea was it? Because this road I know was uh, the Accra Kumasi thing was made by President Kufo, uh, President Kufo yes, and improved uh, later by subsequent governments. How is it that you're driving out of the cities and you can't have dual carriage roads? How? Dual carriage roads. Why can't we have? So, so people are doing overtaking. Like that. And there are so many trucks overtaking. This is happening. This is how people drive on the Kumasi, Accra Kumasi Highway. This is how people drive. So imagine that if you had two on this stretch, and anybody who uses that road will tell you that when they get to the portions where there are two roads on this side and two, two lanes on the other side where the traffic does not have to, you know, meet each other. You can see the kind of, look at it, look at how dark the place is. Look at the highlights, how people are driving with highlights. So if you're as blind as a bat, oh dear, what's your mobile car? What's your mobile? And I'm saying this because oftentimes we know what the issues are. We report on what the issues are. Our leaders know what the problems are, but not until some of them die on that road or get hurt on that road, the problem remains a problem. I say we know what the problems are. We know what the issues are. They announce them in press conferences and speeches. We commemorate every single year, setting road safety, whatever it is. But I'm saying, you let a big man have an accident here. Or let a big man's person die here or get hurt here. The next day they will fix the street lights. I, and I'm saying this because, look, we have, we have spoken about so many of the issues which relate to the average or ordinary person, and he has not received attention. Sometimes he had to wait until Ebony, Ebony, the late Ebony. It was on the same Accra Kumasi stretch that she had the unfortunate accident with one other, and they died. Yes, I'm mean saying that Kumasi, Accra, Kumasi, Kumasi, Sunyani, Techiman, I mean, all the way to the north. Let me even extend the conversation. All the way to the north, to Tamale, sometimes. And I'm saying, how is it that you are connecting two cities? You cannot have dual carriage roads, you cannot have proper street lights. Sometimes you cannot even have road markings. There have been instances where we've driven from the Volta region, you get to a place, you can't even find the road mark. Even if you didn't have street lights or you don't have street lights and you had road markings, you could throw your headlight and then you could be guided. Sometimes you get that the road markings are not even existent. Meanwhile, there are local assemblies there. Meanwhile, there's a whole ministry for roads and, 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 and highways. Meanwhile, there's a whole ministry for transport. And this is a national security threat. This is a national security threat. If you, if you ply that road every now and then, for those who perhaps may be in, uh, on transfer at Kumasi, they want to come and see their family in Accra and go back. Each time they set, on this, or set off on this road, they have their hearts in their mouths. Why must it be so? Why must you be traveling in your own country and be dodging bullets like Sam George at Iowa's West Wogan? In your own country. This cannot continue forever. We must at a point wake up so good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. Vice President. Good morning to our roads minister. Good morning to our transport minister. Good morning to our interior minister. Good morning to our national security minister. And good morning to our ever absent minister for gender, children, and social protection. Good morning to you.
Ebushan 4. Sorry for interruption. But due to the acidic content of the atmospheric weather condition,